Hello, my name's David, and this is my review of what's happened after one month on the carnivore diet. Welcome back to everybody who's been subscribing and following me on my journey so far. And hello and welcome to anyone new who may have not seen any of my previous videos and is seeing this for the first time. This is just what I've been doing is I've been doing a daily journal of what's happened after I started the carnivore diet on the 1st of January this year. And I wanted to just do a video recap of what's happened over the last month and what things stood out to me, what things came to mind when I was just thinking about what people might want to know and what I might want to look back on later. And so that's what we're doing. So the first thing I want to talk about is organization. I'm not the most organized person in the world, and I was surprised at actually how much pre-planning and organization that I needed to have to make sure that I stayed on the diet all the time. I mean, I know everybody knows that, you know, you need to do your weekly shop and you need to think about what your meals are going to be for the week. And from that perspective, from a family shop and when you're at home, it actually makes it quite easy because you just go down the meat aisle, grab as much stuff as you can, sort of, and that's it. You're basically set. The challenge comes in when you're out of the house, whether you work in an office or you need to go to events, you really need to think about what's nearby. How are you going to be able to eat? When are you going to be able to eat? How easy or difficult is that going to be? And do you need to take something with you to make sure that you're going to be able to stay on? Because nothing's worse than getting somewhere. Maybe you, you know, even if you have breakfast in the morning, so you have a couple of eggs and maybe some, I don't know, a piece of steak or a piece of meat or some bacon or something like that. You're like, okay, great. You go to an event, you then realize they don't literally don't have anything but pastries there to eat. There's nothing you can have. And then by the time lunchtime comes around, you're actually quite hungry and you're really like, and then you start getting tempted because you think, oh, well, maybe I'll just have a little bit because I'm starving and I need to take the edge off. And that's where the danger territory is. So you really need to, every week, you need to look at your schedule on the weekend. You need to think about where am I going to be this week? Is there going to be food there? Do I need to take something with me? And maybe you need to prep your meals for all week. You know, buy five or six steaks, maybe cut them, slice them up, have them ready to go so you can just chuck them in a small, you know, sealed container, whatever, chuck it in your bag so that when you're out and about, you can have that just to snack on or something to eat while you're out. And I really can't stress enough how important this is. And it, I really didn't think about it. And maybe that's me because I'm not the most organized person in the world, but I think it's valuable just to highlight for everybody else that if you are thinking about doing the diet, then it's something to consider. The people who are already on the diet probably will say, yeah, of course, this is something I learned as well. So hopefully it's a common thing. But yeah, so I'm much more thoughtful and organized about how I approach all of my meals now. The second thing I wanted to talk about actually builds a little bit off the first. So there is the whole idea that you need to be organized and you need to have everything together. I wanted this in a separate item because for me, it's been really important and it's something that's come up a lot in all of the comments as well, which is needing something to eat that's technically off plan. And for me, that's peanut butter and peanuts and maybe some macadamia nuts. Because what I found is, is that sometimes mentally, not physically, but mentally, I need to cheat. And I don't know why, but I find it really difficult. So it's it's almost like a compulsion to eat something that's not strictly on the diet. And so what I did is I I decided what's the least bad thing that I can have that for me qualifies in my brain as cheating or off plan and making sure that I have some of that available. So as part of my organization, I always make sure that I have a little pack of peanuts. It might be 50 grams of peanuts or something that I just keep in my bag, or I keep some macadamia nuts in my office. I have pe crunchy, I always get crunchy peanut butter, um, but I have crunchy peanut butter at home. So at night, I, 
I'm in the habit of snacking and always having a snack. And my wife has snacks and my son has snacks. And when I see them snacking, I find it personally really challenging to not snack. And so I think it's important and it's just a tip and maybe you're totally fine and you don't have that problem. If that's it, then don't worry about having some sort of plan B for when you fall off the cart. But for me, I found it really, really helpful to actually have something that I know that I can fall back on. It was sort of before I had the issue with Coke Zero, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Before that surfaced, I used to have a fallback and I used to drink a Coke Zero or a Diet Coke or something because, again, it was if I was just craving some different taste because the diet, for me, it's so boring. Like, just meat, no matter how I season it, no matter what I do with it, at the end of the day, it's boring. And I have, mentally, I have to have something to break that up. And so that's where the, that's where the sort of off plan option comes in. So just like being prepared to take your lunch and being prepared to know where you're going to eat, if you're going to be out, it's also good to be prepared for those times that you're going to have a craving and you're just not going to want to, you're not going to know what to do. And if you have something already prepared and you say, okay, well, maybe you don't like peanuts and you don't like macadamia nuts and you have to find something else. I, and I don't know what that might be because those are my things, but I would suggest that you have something as a fallback just in case. And those times that you really are feeling that you need something else. I mean, I guess worst case scenario, you could eat a protein bar, but Again, those have lots of artificial sweeteners in them and all sorts of stuff that's totally not on the diet. But if you had to go off plan, maybe that might not be so bad. I don't know, maybe a piece of broccoli or a carrot. But anyway, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is for you, you need to work that out for yourself. But anyway, I just found that it was really helpful to have that option available. Number three, I'm sleeping way better. I... Before I started the diet, I tossed and turned in the night. I would wake up frequently when I was rolling around. So even in the morning when I woke up, I would remember tossing and turning throughout the night. And I never, it's not that I never felt rested. A lot of times I felt rested, but it just didn't feel like I, I had long stretches of sleep. I was just, I felt like I was waking up all the time. What my wife had told me is, is that I had sleep apnea. Now, I've not been to a doctor. I've not been formally diagnosed. But from what she said, that's what it sounds like. And she said that a lot of times I would fall asleep before she did. And then she would notice that I would just literally stop breathing for 30 seconds or a minute or a minute and a half. And then all of a sudden, I would sort of jolt myself awake and then turn over and go back to sleep again. And I think this is what was happening. So all those times that I remember rolling around, apparently that was from the sleep, or maybe that was from the sleep apnea. I won't say for sure. What I do know is that after a week or so on the diet, my sleep improved vastly. And I asked my wife the other night, and if you've listened to some of the other ones, I've mentioned this already, but I, I asked my wife the other night, you know, was my sleep apnea any better? And she said, she thought about it for a second, and then she was like, well, it hasn't been waking me up, and I haven't noticed it, so yeah, probably. So I think that's had a direct correlation to whether my, you know, to, to causing my sleep apnea to go away. And I do track my sleep. I have a Samsung watch that tracks my sleep and gives me a sleep score every day. And I'd never had a sleep score in the 90s until around week three of the diet. And then all of a sudden I started getting 90, 94s, 95s. I had a 97 one day when I slept about nine hours. So it's definitely had some sort of an impact on my sleep. And interestingly, when, and again, we're going to talk about this in the next point, but I, I had a Coke Zero, which had a bit of a negative impact on how I was feeling in some other areas of my health. But the night that I had that drink, and tried to sleep, I didn't sleep as well. And I hadn't even really worked out that that was an issue yet. So 
I'm I'm wondering if maybe there's something with artificial sweeteners or something that was maybe in the in the chicken that I ate if it was part of that. So anyway, sleep massive one, um, and that's been really really great. And I wake up and I feel energetic in the morning, but then again I also in the evening I also feel quite tired, and I tend to go to bed a little bit earlier. So it almost seems to be getting my sleep cycles back even though I haven't really changed anything in my caffeine intake. And I've always been a person that could, I can literally drink caffeine up until I go to bed, fall asleep in two minutes and sleep soundly all evening. That's never been an issue for me for whatever reason. So I don't think it's that. But anyway, I have seen vast improvements in my sleep. Okay, number four. This is the big one, the one everybody always wants to talk about, weight loss. So let's just get the facts and figures out of the way, and then I can talk a little bit more about it in with some thoughts about the weight loss and how it works. So I started off on the 1st of January at 220.9 pounds. That's 100.2 kilos in new money. And yesterday I weighed in at 96.1 kilos, which is 211.9 pounds. So that's a nine pound difference. I know that doesn't seem as much as some people lose, but I didn't have, I, I wasn't hugely overweight to begin with. So I'm quite happy with that. And considering the fact that I haven't done a tremendous amount of exercise while I'm doing that, and that's literally just me going about pretty much going about my daily routine, I think that's pretty good. And I also feel like it's more sustainable. If it comes off slowly over time instead of a massive hit, in my experience, when you lose weight that way, it's much better and it's much more sustainable to keep it off in the long term. So that's that. Those are the numbers. I'm quite happy with that, especially seeing as that was not really the major motivation for me doing the diet in the first place. What I would say to people, though, is I like to, I'm a data person. I've worked in data and data analytics for nearly 20 years. I like to track everything. I weigh myself every day. I was doing body fat every day. I track my calories, my, you know, all my macros, on the number of steps I take, how much exercise I have. I make notes about how I felt that day. I keep all sorts of stuff. I keep track of my BMI, how many, how many grams of protein based on my weight I should eat every day. I track all that stuff in a massive spreadsheet. <clears throat> I'm not recommending that everyone do that. That's over the top, probably for most people. But for me personally, I find it really useful and quite interesting to, to track all of that. Because as I track it and I track the calories and I track you know my macros and everything else, what I start to look for is I can look for patterns and I can try and find patterns in the data that I don't Maybe, maybe I didn't know about, or if I eat one thing and then I notice my body reacts in a certain way, I can go back and start to think, okay, well, actually it's done that before. So I actually have four years worth of tracking my health this way. I did it when I lost, I lost, um, three stone, which is about 50 pounds. Um, a couple of years ago, ended up running a half marathon. That's a whole nother story. But during that time, I tracked everything as well. And what, so what do I know from that? What's the point? The point is, is that what I've noticed, even on this diet, is that my weight will go up and down sometimes by a pound overnight. And that's just your body retaining water and getting rid of water. So if you're going about it, and maybe you only weigh yourself once a week. So if you weigh yourself once a week, you might just hit it on that day where you've got an extra one or two, even two pounds of water. And you might think that you're not losing as much as you actually are. So don't get discouraged if the scale doesn't say what you think it should say. Just keep at it because it will eventually come down. I've been through two separate periods where I didn't, my weight didn't change for three, sometimes four days in a row. And then all of a sudden it would drop by a pound or more. So you just need to stick with it. You just need to be consistent. Weigh whenever you're comfortable weighing. Some people, I've, I've seen videos on YouTube, some people don't like to weigh at all. 
and they weigh themselves once a month. Some people randomly whenever they want, some people once a week, and then you've got psychos like me who weigh themselves every day down to the 10th of a kilo and, and keep it all in a spreadsheet. So I guess the point is, is that yes, you will lose weight on the diet naturally. Yes, you can potentially lose a lot of weight over long periods of time, but try not to fixate on that. Try and if you're going to fixate on something, fixate on all of the other benefits that you get, the energy that you get, the better sleep you get, the better health you get, the better you feel. And don't worry so much about the number on the scale. As a side note, if anybody wants a copy of the spreadsheet that I use, I can create a shared Google sheet and share it with anybody. So if you put in the comments, if you'd like me to share it, um, I'll, I'll put up a link or something so that people can access it. But just let me know if you want it. I'll share it with people so that you guys can have it. That's it for this one. On to the next. OK, last but not least, number five general health. So the reason I started this diet in the first place was I wanted to explore the elimination side of it, not really the weight loss side, because I had a few things health-wise, just general health-wise, that having listened to people like Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan and all all the others, um, that I, I suspected might actually help alleviate some of the issues. Um, Things I've talked about are, you know, gingivitis. Um, I've had tendonitis. I've had some early onset sort of arthritis where my joints, particularly in my hands, would feel a bit swollen and, and really painful. And all those sorts of things were the kinds of things that I kept hearing, obviously anecdotally, that the carnivore diet would be really good at helping with. So I wanted to explore that. And I had a problem with my knee as well. So after getting on the diet, I think it took about two weeks for things to really start to settle down a little bit. But kind of by the end of week three, I, I'd noticed that really my hands didn't hurt anymore. And, you know, my tendons, even when I went to the gym, if I went to the gym and lifted weights, I would have the general muscle soreness, but I wouldn't have the, the kind of really sore tendon. It just felt like tendonitis. I haven't been diagnosed. I don't know what it is, but that's what it feels like. And that's what I call it. Um, so I, th I think that I'm pretty happy with what's happened. I know there was an instance in the last couple of days where I had a Diet Coke or a, sorry, a Coke Zero when I went out to lunch with my wife. I also had a chicken kebab, which just the chicken, the meat from the, from the kebab. So I'm not really sure whether it was the chicken or if it was the Coke, but I suspect that it was the artificial sweetener in the Coke Zero that I reacted to. Because generally speaking, I'm, I've been pretty good with chicken, even if it had seasoning on it. So I've had some comments from some people. Yes, causation, correlation does not mean causation. It doesn't mean directly that that's the cause and, and that sort of thing, which is why I want to test it a little bit further. So... If you come back, if you're curious, if you want to come back and watch the daily videos as I go through February, I am going to go back and test those to see what happens. Um, the other thing was that I did sort of have the normal symptoms. So the kind of, I never get the keto flu. Um, I tend to deal with it pretty well in the transition pretty well. I did get a little bit tired for a couple of days, but I never kind of felt bad. I did go through the phase where I had the really bad breath and I went through a phase where I was constipated, but all of that has pretty much passed now. And I think my body's really adjusted to the new diet and what I'm eating. So I still think there's a little bit to go maybe on the gut biome, but I'm, I'm certainly more comfortable than I was and I feel a lot better. And again, the, the general pain and that sort of stuff has gone away. Um, we've already talked about the sleep apnea, which was happening. And again, that seems to have gone away. And I, I think what, you know, what's in there is there's a whole bunch of little things that have got better and all of that added up, you know, you fix one thing and then that means your body doesn't have to fix that and it can go fix something else. So I suspect that over the next few months, it's just going to get better. Um, but yeah, no, those, those were the things specifically about health that I think 
we're probably just, I, I talked about most of it already. The, you know, things like the gingivitis, like I used, my gums used to bleed really, really badly. It's something that's happened for years. It's one of those things that's really difficult to get to go away, but it's my gums don't bleed nearly that it's still there, but it's way, way better than it used to be. So I do think that give it another couple of months. I mean, I'm at this point, I'm really excited to see what happens in the next couple of months. So health wise, and you know, we'll, we'll see where I get. I'm going to keep this short because I've, I've talked about most of it and I, I want to do in the next section, I want to talk about, so what does all this mean? So here we go. All right. This wasn't originally part of the plan, but having recorded all the different sections, I kind of got the feeling that maybe I needed to wrap everything up and just summarize everything with the simple question of, so what? So what does all that mean? My summary of the whole month, if I were to answer that question is, so I like the diet, so I think the diet works. So I definitely want to continue with it. So it's pushed me to become more organized and to really think a lot more about what I'm doing and how I do it and where I'm going and that sort of thing. It's also doing the video aspect of it and having to record every night has also made me have to be even more organized because even when I'm away, if I go away and I stay overnight, then I have to make sure I have enough stuff and enough time that I've built in so that I can actually do my daily recording and then I can get it published and get it up. I really, really don't want to miss a day. I want to hit every single day and I want to do it every day all year. So it's, it's pushing me to actually think about other stuff just outside the diet. So is it making me a better person overall? Mm, that's maybe a value judgment, but it's certainly forcing me to be slightly more organized. I, I enjoy it actually, and I want to continue. So I'm definitely going to do another month. The plan is to do another month, maybe two, and then we'll sort of see how we get on as we go over time. But I want this to be like at least a year long project. So I don't see any point in stopping. Some things I've talked about throughout the month as well are I want to start to just whittle down a little bit on the sort of off plan foods. So I want to eat less peanut butter and I want to eat fewer peanuts and I want to eat fewer macadamia nuts and I want to eat more red meat and more steak specifically and not sort of ground beef and that sort of thing. I, I prefer, I think, to have the actual steak. It's more filling and I think it takes your body more to break it down as well, which probably is good for you and burns a little bit more energy at the same time. I'm not going to go lion diet just yet. I still enjoy having the other meat. So I have a lot of turkey. I have a lot of chicken and those sorts of things mixed in as well. But I do think that now that I've done a month, I'm used to everything. I can now start to just tighten it a little bit and maybe not cheat, even though it's it's not, it's not, it's, it is cheating. It is cheating. I was going to say it's not cheating, but it is cheating. And I really want to get better about not cheating so often because I'm kind of doing it every day at the minute. So I want to try and get off the little bit, even the little bits of sugar that I have in my tea and coffee. You know, I have you know, maybe one and a half or two teaspoons of, of sugar a day just in one drink in the morning and one at night. But I want to stop doing that as well. Just just nudge the diet a little bit more in the direction of being more strict and see what happens. The other thing I realized that I hadn't talked about were electrolytes and what I'm doing around that. So I do have some electrolytes that I enjoy taking but I do need to do that more regularly. And I suspect that some of the things, maybe some of the weight going up and down and that variability and whatever might come from when I'm taking electrolytes and when I'm not. So if I have a bit of electrolyte, then I think I retain a bunch of water and then that causes the, it's not the way it's just water retention, but I'm, I'm going to explore that a little more, but I'm going to, again, try and be more disciplined about going to the gym, taking the electrolytes, 
and then tightening down just a little bit on the diet and seeing what happens. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope maybe you've learned something and I've certainly learned something from having to put all the content together. And that was kind of the point as well. I've also, if you've, if you've watched any of my other videos, I don't like to go over the top on editing or anything, but I did try and do something a little bit more special this time just to make it nicer to watch. So I hope everybody enjoys that. Give me some feedback if you like it in the, in the comments, please be, try and be nice. Um, and if this is the first time of you seeing it, please hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get updated. I mean, I do post a video every single day and you don't, you know, if you're interested and you want to come on the journey with me, then please do and hit the subscribe button that's down there. If not, you know, you can dip in and out or you can check on the monthly updates because I will do one of these at the end of every month as well. So we'll see how it goes over the next few days. But if you're still here and you're still listening, thanks for hanging in the whole time and we will see you tomorrow. Bye bye.